Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can export Excel worksheets into individual Excel workbooks, meaning that each sheet becomes its own unique Excel workbook. So we have an example file over here, which is a list of YouTube's trending statistics, and this is organized by region, so trending videos in Canada, France, Great Britain, etc. Notice that some of these sheets have pivot tables and pivot charts, which were intentionally included to show you that whenever these sheets are copied into individual workbooks, they do retain the same format in terms of the pivot tables and pivot charts. So now that you have an idea of how the file looks, let's get right into it. So I'll close out of it. And now let's just jump into R. Now first things first, we need to load in the necessary libraries. So I will load in the open Excel SX package, which is a library that allows you to manipulate Excel workbooks. And then I'm also going to load in the tidyverse. Okay, now the first step here is we need to store the file path in an object called file name. So I will set that equals to file.choose, which will open up a box for me, allowing me to select the file. So in this case, the file that I'm referring to here is youtubestats.xlsx. I'll open that up. Next, I wanna load this in as an Excel workbook object. The way to do that is by creating a WB object setting it equals to load workbook, which is a function from open XLSX. And then I'll pass in the file name in there. And this might take a while because the file is big. Okay, the file has been loaded and now we can move on to the next step. But before we do that, I'll show you that this is actually a workbook object by simply passing in the class function. And then what we can notice is that it tells us that the class type is workbook. So that means we are good to go. So typically speaking, we want to make sure that every sheet is its own individual workbook. So I will create a vector containing all the names of the sheets. And I'll do that by typing in an object called sheet names. And I'll set that equals to names and pass in the WB object. So if we wanted to look at the sheet names, what we're going to get is a list of all the sheet names. Now, the way this works in the open Excel SX package is we need to make sure that we remove all of the tabs that we don't want and we keep one tab and then we need to export that as a workbook. So let me give you an example. Let's say I'm only interested in the JP videos tab and I want to make that its own workbook. So first things first, I would have to duplicate the original workbook. So I'll create a new object called WB2 and set it equals to copy workbook and I'll pass in the WB object. Next, I'm going to have to create a vector which includes everything except JP videos. And the way to do that is by creating an object called excluded sheets and setting that equals to the set diff function from dplyr. And it takes in two arguments. The first argument will be the sheet names. And then the second argument would be the JP videos. What this is going to do is it's going to find the difference between these two objects. And if we run that, we're going to see that the result is all of the tabs except for JP videos. And these are the ones that we want to pass into the remove worksheet function. So OpenXL SX has a function called remove worksheet where we pass in the workbook that we're interested in. So in this case, it's WB2. And then for the sheet, if we pass in excluded sheets and we try to run that, it will give you an error telling you that the sheet must have length one, meaning that you can only do this with one sheet at a time. So this is where we're going to take advantage of the map function from per. So the map function is a simplified for loop and its format is very simple. All we need to do is type in map and then it takes in two arguments. The first argument would be the list of things that you want to loop over. So in this case, it's the excluded sheets. Next, for the second argument, you're going to have to pass in a, a squiggly line and anything after it is basically all the piece of code that you want applied to each of the items in excluded sheets. So in this case, I just simply need to put in the remove worksheet uh, function in here. But the only difference here is that I'm going to explicitly label the parameters. So I'm going to say WB equals to WB2. And then for the sheet, I'm going to set that equals to a period. 
and the period would represent every iteration in the excluded sheets. So the map function automatically understands that the uh, period over here represents the excluded sheets and it should plug in each one into this place over here. So if I were to run that just like as it is, it's going to give me a bunch of outputs over here. So now if we actually look at the WB2, you're going to notice that we only have one sheet, which is the JP videos. So if I wanted to save this as a workbook, and then what I'll do is I'll type in WB2, and I'll create the file name, and I'll just call it uh, jpvideos.xlsx. And if I were to run that, what it does is if I go into my in my working directory, so just to make sure that I'm in the right working directory, it's in the document. So if I go into my documents, you're going to notice that we have a file called jpvideos.xlsx, uh, which consists of all the data for the Japan videos. So it seems that this actually does work. So what we'll do now is we want to apply this to all the sheet names. So this is where we'll put this in a basic for loop. And the basic for loop will just loop over all the sheet names. So I'll say for sheet in sheet names. Uh, we want to first start off by duplicating the workbook. And then next, instead of the JP videos, we're just going to set this equals to sheet because this would represent each sheet in the sheet names over here. And then for the map function over here, this can remain the same. And then last but not least for the save workbook, typically speaking, we want this to be the name of the sheet dot XLSX. So what I'll do here is I'll create a paste function where I'll be pasting in the sheet name followed by a dot XLSX, which just simply concatenates the sheet name to the .xlsx format so that it can properly save as a file. So I will go ahead and highlight all of this code and run it. Okay, it looked like it just finished. And if we go into our documents directory, we're gonna notice that now we have all the files. Now this took a little bit of time because if you notice, the size of these files are pretty large. Like this one's 45 megabytes, this one's 45 megabytes, this one's 45, all of them are pretty pretty large in size. So that's why it took some time. But let's go ahead and check some of these to make sure that the pivot tables and pivot charts are retained. So I remember the Canada videos did have a pivot table and a pivot chart. So if we open that up, you're going to notice that we have it in there. And then same thing with the Great Britain videos. If we open that up, you're also going to notice that the pivot table and pivot chart remain in there as is. And now you have every sheet in its own unique workbook. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.